Today, the animal kingdom is filled with fearsome predators like lions, sharks and crocodiles. But what if I told you that their ancient ancestors were even more terrifying? Imagine a world where the ancestors of the great white shark, the mighty megalodon, roamed the oceans, reaching lengths of up to 18 meters, capable of devouring whales whole. Or picture Arctotherium, the giant short-faced bear, towering over three meters tall and weighing up to 1,600 kilograms, using its immense strength to dominate the prehistoric landscapes of South America. In this video, we'll explore some of the most dangerous extinct creatures that once ruled our planet, revealing a world far more terrifying than the one we know today. Let's start with the ultimate terrestrial carnivore, Arctotherium, a giant bear of the Ice Age, dominated South America with its towering height and immense strength. Arctotherium was a genus of giant short-faced bears that roamed South America during the Pleistocene epoch, between approximately 2.5 million and 11,000 years ago. These bears were among the largest terrestrial carnivores to have ever existed, with some species, such as Arctotherium angustidens, reaching lengths of up to 3.4 meters and weighing as much as 1,600 kilograms. Arctotherium possessed a stocky, muscular build with long limbs and a short, broad face, typical of short-faced bears. Their powerful jaws and large teeth indicate they were adept both as predators and scavengers. This formidable dentition suggests they could take down sizable megafauna, such as glyptodons and giant ground sloths, and potentially compete with early human hunters. Their immense size and strength made them apex predators in their ecosystems, capable of intimidating other predators and dominating their environment. Compared to their modern counterparts, the brown bear, Arctotherium was significantly larger and possessed a more robust skeletal structure, optimized for raw strength rather than agility or speed. While modern brown bears have an omnivorous diet that includes a substantial amount of vegetation, fish and smaller mammals, Arctotherium likely had a more carnivorous and aggressive feeding strategy focusing on large prey and scavenging opportunities. Additionally, the sheer size and power would have made them more formidable in confrontations, both with prey and potential competitors. Arctotherium thrived during the Pleistocene, a period characterized by diverse and abundant megafauna. However, as the last ice age came to an end around 11,000 years ago, Significant climate changes led to habitat shifts and the decline of many large mammal species. These environmental changes, coupled with the spread of early human populations who hunted megafauna, likely played a crucial role in the extinction of Arctotherium. Now we have the dire wolf, larger and stronger than today's wolves, hunting in packs to bring down the giant herbivores of the Ice Age. The dire wolf was a large, prehistoric, carnivorous mammal that roamed North and South America during the late Pleistocene epoch, from about 130,000 to 11,000 years ago. As one of the most iconic predators of the Ice Age, the dire wolf lived alongside other megafauna like mammoths, saber-toothed cats, and giant ground sloths. Despite its resemblance to modern wolves, the dire wolf was a distinct species with notable differences that made it a formidable predator of its time. The dire wolf was larger and more robust than today's grey wolf, standing about 80 centimetres tall at the shoulder and weighing between 60 to 80 kilograms, with some exceptional individuals potentially reaching over 90 kilograms. Its body was stockier and more heavily built, with a larger, stronger skull and more powerful jaws, adapted for taking down large prey and crushing bone. The teeth of the dire wolf were particularly suited for gripping and tearing flesh, and its larger carnassial teeth, which are specialized for shearing meat, allowed it to crush through the bones of its prey more efficiently than modern wolves. Fossil evidence suggests that dire wolves likely hunted in packs, 
similar to modern wolves, and their powerful bodies made them capable of hunting the massive herbivores that roamed the Pleistocene, such as bison, horses, and even juvenile mammoths. The most significant difference between the dire wolf and the modern grey wolf lies in their physical build. While grey wolves are more agile and built for endurance, allowing them to chase down prey over long distances, dire wolves were more heavily muscled and adapted for strength rather than speed. This suggests that the dire wolf may have employed a different hunting strategy, relying on ambush tactics or hunting in environments where large prey were more easily cornered or captured. Let's not forget the terror bird, a massive, flightless and fast-running predator that ruled South America's prehistoric plains. The terror birds were a family of large, flightless, predatory birds that lived in South America during the Cenozoic era, between 62 and 2 million years ago. These fearsome birds were apex predators in their ecosystems, dominating the South American landscapes until the arrival of more modern carnivorous mammals. With their towering height, powerful beaks, and swift running speed, terror birds earned their name by striking terror into the hearts of their prey. Terror birds were large, with the largest species reaching heights of up to three meters. These birds had long, powerful legs, which allowed them to run at speeds estimated to be as high 50 kilometers per hour, making them highly efficient hunters in open grasslands and forests. They were built for speed and power, with a lightweight but muscular body that allowed them to chase down prey over long distances. Their most distinctive feature was their enormous hooked beak, which could grow to over 0.6 meters in length. This beak was sharp and robust, designed for delivering crushing blows to their prey. Instead of swallowing their prey whole, as some modern birds do, Terror birds likely used their beaks to strike and incapacitate their victims, breaking bones or tearing flesh before consuming them. Their beak was so strong that it could have easily crushed the skulls or bones of their prey. Terror birds differed significantly from modern birds, particularly in their role as apex predators. Most modern flightless birds, such as ostriches and emus, are herbivores or omnivores, feeding on plants, seeds, and small animals. In contrast, terror birds were strictly carnivorous and adapted for hunting and killing large prey, which included small mammals, reptiles, and possibly other birds. Their massive size and strength gave them an advantage over most predators in their environment, and their large hooked beak made them deadly to any smaller creatures they encountered. Moving on to Megalania, a giant monitor lizard, a venomous ambush predator lurking in the ancient Australian outback. Megalania was a giant predatory monitor lizard that lived in Australia during the Pleistocene epoch. This massive reptile is considered the largest terrestrial lizard to have ever lived, making it a top predator in its environment. Its name, which means Great Roma, reflects its dominance across the ancient Australian landscape. Megalania was an enormous muscular lizard, estimated to have reached lengths of 6 to 7 meters and weighing around 600 kilograms. Its size and bulk far surpassed modern monitor lizards like the Komodo dragon, the largest living lizard today. This lizard had a powerful, thick body with strong clawed limbs, ideal for gripping prey and digging. Its head was equipped with sharp, serrated teeth, well suited for tearing into the flesh of large herbivores, and recent studies suggest that Megalania may have had venom glands similar to modern Komodo dragons, which would have made its bite deadly and caused rapid blood loss, infection, or shock in its prey. The lizard's jaw strength combined with venom would have made it an extremely effective ambush predator. Megalania's closest living relative is the Komodo dragon, but it was significantly larger and more powerful. Megalania dwarfed them in both size and mass. Its size and strength allowed it to prey on much larger animals than modern Komodo dragons, such as the giant Diprotodon, 
a prehistoric wombat-like mammal, large marsupials, and possibly even early human ancestors. Whereas the Komodo dragon relies heavily on venom and its hunting technique involves stalking and then retreating to let the venom weaken its prey, Megalania was likely more direct and aggressive in its attacks. Its immense size would have allowed it to overpower its prey quickly, reducing the need for prolonged hunts. Let's continue with Dinosuchus, a prehistoric crocodile so massive it was capable of taking down even the mightiest dinosaurs. Dinosuchus was a colossal prehistoric crocodilian that lived during the late Cretaceous period. Its name, meaning terrible crocodile, reflects its immense size and fearsome reputation as one of the largest predators of its time. Dinosuchus inhabited the coastal and freshwater regions of what is now North America, thriving in environments that were home to dinosaurs, turtles, and other large reptiles. Dinosuchus was far larger than any modern crocodile, with estimates suggesting it could grow up to 11 meters in length and weigh up to 5,000 kilograms. Its massive skull alone was around 1.3 meters long and its jaws were packed with large conical teeth designed for crushing rather than slicing, enabling it to prey on large animals, including dinosaurs. Despite its size, Dinosuchus had a body structure similar to modern crocodilians, with a long muscular tail and heavily armored skin that provided both protection and stability in the water. Its powerful jaws, combined with a tremendous bite force, allowed it to ambush and overpower large prey, dragging them into the water much like modern crocodiles do. Fossil evidence suggests that Dinosuchus could take on some of the largest dinosaurs leaving distinctive bite marks on bones from species like Hadrosaurus. Compared to modern crocodiles, such as the saltwater crocodile, Dinosuchus was far larger and more powerful, while modern crocodiles primarily prey on fish, birds and small to medium-sized mammals, Dinosuchus was capable of taking down large dinosaurs and other megafauna, making it an apex predator in its environment. Another key difference between Dinosuchus and modern crocodiles is its jaw structure. Modern crocodiles have sharp pointed teeth designed to grip and tear flesh, whereas Dinosuchus had teeth built for crushing bone and shell. This suggests that it may have also preyed on large armored animals such as turtles and possibly scavenged the carcasses of dead dinosaurs. Now, let's talk about the animal known as the Siberian unicorn, Elasmotherium, a massive horned beast that roamed the Ice Age steppes. Elasmotherium, often referred to as the Siberian unicorn, was a giant prehistoric rhinoceros that roamed the steppes of Eurasia during the late Pliocene to Pleistocene epochs. Known for its enormous size and distinctive horn, Elasmotherium has long fascinated scientists and myth enthusiasts alike. Fossil evidence suggests it lived in what is now Russia, Ukraine and Kazakhstan, thriving in the cold grassland environments. Elasmotherium was much larger than modern rhinos, with an estimated length of around 5 meters and a shoulder height of up to 2 meters. It likely weighed around 5,000 kilograms making it comparable in size to modern-day elephants. The most iconic feature of Elasmotherium was its massive horn, which is believed to have been up to one meter or more in length. Although no fossilized horns have been found, only skull features indicating the attachment point. Unlike modern rhinos, Elasmotherium had a more horse-like body with long, thick legs built for running across the vast plains. Its skull was long and low, with a massive bony protrusion on the forehead, which would have anchored its enormous horn. The purpose of this horn is debated, but it may have been used for defense, mating displays, or digging for food, such as roots and tubers, during harsh winters. Elasmotherium differed significantly from modern rhinoceroses, like the white rhino or black rhino, not only in size but also in physical structure. 
While modern rhinos have shorter, stockier bodies and two horns, Elasmotherium likely had a single massive horn. Modern rhinos are primarily browsers and grazers, consuming vegetation such as leaves and grass, but Elasmotherium likely fed on tougher grasses, shrubs, and perhaps roots due to the more extreme, colder environments it inhabited. Next, the cave lion, a giant of the Ice Age, hunted the largest prey across the frozen landscapes of Eurasia. The cave lion, also known as the Eurasian cave lion, was one of the largest and most formidable big cats to have ever lived. It roamed Europe, Asia, and parts of North America during the Pleistocene Epoch. This massive predator was closely related to modern lions, but it was considerably larger and adapted to hunting in the harsh, cold environments of the Ice Age. The cave lion was an imposing predator, with males reaching up to 1.2 meters at the shoulder and measuring around 2.1 meters in length, not including the tail. Its estimated weight ranged from 300 to 400 kilograms, making it one of the largest big cats of all time. Its muscular build and strong legs suggest that it was capable of bringing down large prey such as bison, deer, and even young mammoths. Although the cave lion was similar in appearance to modern lions, there were key differences. Cave lions were bigger and heavier and are believed to have had shorter, thicker fur, likely pale or slightly golden in color, which helped them blend into the snowy, tundra-like environments of the Ice Age. Fossil evidence, along with ancient cave paintings, suggests that unlike modern lions, the cave lion may have lacked a prominent mane or had a much smaller one, possibly as an adaptation to the colder climate. The cave lion's skull and teeth were robust, with long canines and large molars designed for gripping and slicing through thick hide and muscle. Like modern lions, it likely used a combination of strength and teamwork to take down prey, though it was adapted to hunt in a more challenging Ice Age environment. The next animal might be one of the most terrifying of all time, the ultimate ocean predator, Megalodon, a shark so massive it could swallow whales whole. Megalodon was a gigantic prehistoric shark that lived during the Miocene and Pliocene epochs. As one of the largest and most powerful predators in Earth's history, Megalodon dominated the ancient oceans, preying on large marine animals, including whales. Its name, which means big tooth, reflects the massive size of its teeth, some of which measured up to 18 centimeters in length. Megalodon was a colossal shark, with estimates suggesting it grew up to 18 meters or more in length and weighed as much as 50 tons. By comparison, the largest modern day shark, the Great White, typically reaches only about six meters in length. Megalodon's body was thick and muscular, designed for power rather than speed, with a large torpedo-shaped body that allowed it to move through the water efficiently while maintaining control over large prey. Its teeth were not only enormous, but also thick and serrated, making them perfect tools for slicing through the flesh of large marine mammals like whales and seals. With an estimated bite force of up to 40,000 pounds per square inch, Megalodon had the strongest bite of any known animal. Its jaws were so large that they could open wide enough to swallow smaller marine animals whole, and its hunting strategy likely involved ambush attacks, targeting the soft underbellies of whales or incapacitating them with a powerful bite to their flippers. We've journeyed through a world where colossal sharks, giant bears, and towering birds once reigned supreme, each one more terrifying than their modern-day counterparts. These ancient predators shaped their ecosystems and left behind a legacy that fascinates us to this day. While these creatures have long since vanished, their incredible stories remind us of the ever-changing nature of life on Earth. But of course, there were many more terrifying animals back in the days, such as giant apes and dinosaurs that looked like a duck on steroids. Make sure to watch my other video right here, where we explore the ancient world of prehistoric Asia and the fearsome predators that inhabited this continent. Thank you for watching, 
and I will see you there.